I shall introduce you to the to one of the important aspects in stereochemistry that is conformational analysis. Okay, particularly uh, the terms and uh, con uh, concepts which you need to do conformational analysis of different molecules. So in this video, we'll be just uh, going through the uh, basics of conformational analysis. Later on, we'll take examples of molecules and do their conformational analysis. All right. Now, to know or to do conformational analysis, we need to know what is a conformer or what are conformations. Now, when in a molecule, when uh, the uh, single bond in a molecule is rotated, different arrangements of the atom in space is possible okay and when you when you rotate the single bond in a molecule you get a different arrangements infinite number of arrangements of atoms in space and these arrangements are called conformations of that particular molecule okay so conformations are possible wherever free rotation is allowed or in all the molecules where free rotation is allowed. But here you must take care that the uh, bond, the single bond which is being rotated between the atoms. Now the atoms must not be monovalent. The atoms must be either divalent, trivalent or tetravalent. Because uh, if the atoms are monovalent, you will not get any conformations because they appear the same, say here. Uh, say for example, this is, uh, uh, you can say, take this as uh, either chlorine atom, hydrogen atom, uh, like that. Now, uh, here you have a chlorine, chlorine single bond, okay. This, this single bond is free to rotate. But then when the, this bond rotates, uh, you're not going to get any different arrangements. So you get the same thing because the atom is spherical in nature and it is rotating, you get the same molecule, okay. But then, if you take a divalent, I mean, if the atoms uh, across a single bond is divalent, say, for example, this is the uh, structure of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. All right. Now, here, these red balls are uh, oxygen and uh, these small balls, small white balls are represent hydrogen. So, here... Uh, when you rotate this uh, OO single bond, the spatial arrangement of the hydrogen with respect to this hydrogen changes. And then you get different arrangements and you get different conformations or different, uh, 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 I mean, these uh, arrangements in space result in different conformations of the same molecule. Okay, so here the oxygen is divalent. All right, now we, we can take the example of ethane. See here these two black balls, bigger ones are for carbon, represent carbon and the smaller balls represent hydrogen. Now you can, when you rotate this CC single bond, again you will get different conformations. Okay, so wherever free rotation is uh, allowed, you get conformations provided the uh, Atoms attached to the single bond which is rotated freely must be either di, tri or tetravalent. Monovalent atoms will not exhibit conformations. Similarly, uh, the uh, one more thing which you, want to, uh, you must know is that among the organic compounds, hydrocarbons, ethane is the simplest molecule which shows conformations. Methane does not show conformations because methane does not have a CC single bond. Okay, it has CH single bond, but then uh, the, 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 there will not be any conformations possible when, even when CH bond is rotated. Okay, because hydrogen over there is monovalent. Okay, so here these two, these two, carbons which are tetravalent in nature, when uh, the bond across these two uh, carbon is rotated freely, you get various conformations. Alright, so that's the basic thing which you must understand regarding conformations. 
Now, when you rotate the molecule, when you, I'm sorry, when you rotate the uh, bond, the dihedral angle or the torsion angle changes. Or you can say that the various conformations arise because of the change in the dihedral angle when we rotate the single bond. Now, what is dihedral angle? It is the angle between two intersecting planes. Okay, angle between two intersecting planes. Now, we'll see here, here uh, uh, even uh, in the case of chlorine, even if you change the dihedral angle, there is nothing going to happen. But in case of uh, hydrogen peroxide, see here you have one plane like this, H, O, O. That's one plane. Another plane is O, O, H. Okay, so you rotate this uh, O, O bond, what happens? The angle between these two planes changes. So in chemistry, the dihedral angle is the angle between planes through two sets of three atoms two sets of three atoms of which two atoms are in common for both the planes. So in the this hydrogen peroxide, this is the two sets, isn't it? H, O, O is one set and then O, O, H is another set of plane. And in both the sets, the C, uh, sorry, O, O is the common, two atoms which are in common. Okay, see here, uh, we can see here, so th this is a sort of, uh, uh, you can say that it is a four atom three bond system okay four atom three bond system so here you have the four atoms a c c b okay and three bond a c bond c c bond and c b bond so the plane is a c c plane is this one okay here you have h o o and the other plane is c c b plane that is o o h in this case Okay, so you rotate B, you rotate P, then the dihedral angle over here changes between these two planes changes. So you rotate one H from here or either, either of these H, you can rotate either A or B, all right, the dihedral angle changes. Okay, and uh, the best way to represent the conformations is, uh, or conf conformations is a Newman projection. Now, when you uh, look from the side way, side view, this will be uh, if both the uh, uh, substituents attached to each carbon is aligned in the same uh, direction, then you get, or when the angle, dihedral angle between the two planes is zero, then you call it as uh, eclipsed, and this will be the way Newman projection looks. And when the dihedral angle between the two planes is 180 degree, then these uh, A and B will be in the opposite direction. Okay, we'll discuss it in more detail. So the conformations arises due to rotation and when there is rotation, I mean rotation across single bond and when there is free rotation across single bond, the dihedral angle or the torsion angle, dihedral angle is also called as torsion angle, torsion angle changes. All right, now see here, um, uh, these molecules are rotating. Okay, I mean the whole molecule is rotating here. Now here you can see this is hydrogen peroxide. Okay, you rotate the hydrogen peroxide to 180 degree. The, both these bonds, both, both these uh, hydrogen come together. So the di earlier the dihedral angle was like this. It was 90 degree. Okay, uh, sorry, zero degree. The dihedral angle. Uh, I'm sorry, the dihedral angle between uh, these two planes is 180 degree. You rotate it one, one uh, give it a one more 180 rotation, then you get it a zero degree uh, dihedral angle between the planes and uh, they appear in the eclipsed form. And here you can have it in this anti form or the staggered form. Okay, so in the first figure, the, on the right, on the left side, the dihedral angle between the plane is 180 degree. You give one more 180 degree rotation, the dihedral angle becomes 0 degree between the planes. Alright. Now, uh, there are different ways of representing the different conformations. 
and uh, you have the wedge and dash method uh, um, uh, way you can have the sawhorse way and the newman projection way the best projection is the newman projection uh, of projecting the various conformations so this is an example of uh, staggered conformation of ethane and uh, on the right side you have the different projections of uh, eclipsed conformation of ethane and a staggered is when all these uh, substituents on the two carbons are 180 apart and here it is i mean the dihedral angle is 180 degree and here in eclipse the dihedral angle between the adjacent carbon atoms is zero degree all right now uh, uh, when you draw the newman projection the front carbon is uh, you're viewing it from the front side the front carbon is uh, um, represented as a point here so you can see a point and uh, the substituents are attached to it and the back carbon is represented as a circle again the substituents are attached to these blue hydrogens are the substituent on the back carbon the pink hydrogen are the substituent on the front carbon okay so that's uh, how you draw the Newman projection now here you can see the Newman projection of different uh, conformations when the torsion angle or the dihedral angle is 0 degree it's called eclipsed projection when the torsional angle is 60 degree it is called gauche projection and oh, sorry conformation and then now uh, when the torsion angle is 180 degree you get the anti conformation all right now uh, this uh, gauche and anti conformation can be put together as staggered conformation. All right. So here, uh, uh, the the Newman projection uh, shows or differ with respect to the different Newman projection differs with respect to the rotation of the front and back carbon atoms, okay, relative to each other. All right, resulting in the change in the dihedral angle or torsion angle. So when the front and these two front and back carbon changes or the uh, rotates the uh, dihedral angle changes and then you get different conformations okay see here this is uh, the eclipsed form of uh, uh, representing ethane molecule now the angles here you have h c c h okay h c c h is the uh, torsion angle or dihedral angle all right so in this case the h c c h here the torsion angle is zero that's why it appears to be eclipsed does it in the eclipsed conformation and uh, one more thing the anti and gauche uh, representation or conformation uh, apply to bonds on groups on adjacent carbon atoms these adjacent carbon atoms and only to staggered conformation so here you have these two carbon atoms are represented as a point and a circle here okay and the angle dihedral angle between these two carbon atoms is zero degree you get eclipsed and if it is 60 you you move away from zero apart from zero any angle you, that's called that forms a staggered or gauch okay and a stag, gauch conformation and when the angle is 180 degree you get the anti conformation and i repeat once more gauch and anti conformation uh, can be put together into the staggered as a staggered conformation all right so hope uh, this is uh, clear to you now, when you analyze these uh, various conformation in terms of the energy changes or their energy, then we call it as conformational analysis. Or you can see the analysis of the energy changes that a molecule undergoes as the bond, single bond rotate is called conformational analysis. Conformation analysis also deals with the reactivity of the various conformations it must be conformations over here not conformers why should we use the term confirmation i shall discuss it later okay so uh, we shall discuss the conformational analysis of different molecules with respect to energy changes in the next video
right hope these are clear to you concepts are clear if you have any more clarifications please feel free to ask thank you